Yes, my view for the next few days. Not a fair place to be, is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm in Marine del Rey, uh, staying at a friend's place for a few days, and I thought I'd get some nice views from up here. Okay. Hi, this is Barry Selby. Welcome to my scope. This is my love scope, my daily sharing about love, romance, relationships that will help you get where you want to go. Again, my name is Barry Selby. My website is barryselby.com. Easy to remember. All well, my archive scopes are on catch.me with the K forward slash Barry Selby. So you can find my stuff over there. Welcome to my scopes. Just so you know, if you're watching this scope, I'm going to drop some truth bombs on you, as it were, around love and romance beyond what you think is normal. So just so you know. <laughs> okay, you have been warned. Um, I'm still digesting an early scope I did today about a friend of mine who I lost. Hi there. How are you? That's, uh, who's that? Ah, uh, it's not coming up. Okay. It's True Booty. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so the evolution of relationships is my theme and my context for conversation. Um, this came up because I, in a coaching session with a client this morning, we talked about her journey because she's almost at work, the end of working with me for three months. And where she was to where she is now, totally transformed. And in the conversation, she was asking me for a reflection back to her of how I've seen her shift from where she was when we started to where we are now. And I, I was really calling forward actually her gifts because what's come forward in the journey is for her, there were gifts that she was suppressing to stay in the relationship she was in before. And she couldn't handle it. I mean, she, not so much she couldn't handle it, she couldn't stay comfortable. It was limiting her ability to express herself and be true. And now where we are now, because she's free of that and choosing a new direction is, because she was fearful, this is the key. She was fearful that she wouldn't be attracting. Okay. You may start hearing this noise in the background. It's going to be coming up more this evening because this is what happens. In the marina during this time of year, we get the sea lions and they bark loud. So if you hear that loud noise, it's not a dog, that's a sea lion. So back to the topic. My, my client say, uh, said, actually just said that she was fearful that if she expressed her gifts and her love in the world the way she felt it, she couldn't go back to the relationship she, she had and she wouldn't be able to find someone who could match where she is. I was so adamant about that's not the truth. That's the truth, that's the story she's been telling herself. And what I meant, and what I said to her, is that now she's owning who she is in her, her beauty, her femininity, but also the gifts she has to bring to the world, but she's been holding on to a smaller picture of herself. And what she's doing now, well, she will be doing, because I nudged her quite firmly, is she's gonna start marketing her new gifts, her new services, her new skills, because they're way beyond what she was doing before, I believe. There are much deeper spiritual connection to her skills that take away beyond what she was doing as a job before. And I think she offers that to the world. It's going to transform her business and her relationships. And I said to her, by owning that, she will actually attract a relationship at the level now that she's at. That's why I'm doing my own work too. Now, what do I mean by evolution of relationship? And this, that's touching on it, but I want to get more straight on with this. There's been... Um, <laughs> I won't say a conversation, but there's been a mindset that's been running for many years about relationships being somewhere you get comfortable. And I talked about this in play in my previous scopes, which you can all find on catch.me, about the codependent paradigm and how interdependence is the new evolution. I'm speaking to a different angle this time. There's a comfort that people have when they fall in a relationship. Thank you for the hearts, by the way. And if you are watching this and enjoying it, and giving value especially, please keep tapping the screen to give hearts because I'm welcoming more and more to accumulate my status in the heart community in Periscope. Um, what was the other thing there? Yes. So there's a, there's a model of relationship that's very comfortable and it's safe. And to be honest, it's kind of boring. It's that playing at the surface, you've got someone to play with, someone to be cuddled with, someone to have sex with, someone to come home to. And for most people, that's enough. Well, that's what they think is enough. For myself, my clients, and for those people who are aware of it, there's way, way, way more available in a relationship than you think. In my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which I have elsewhere, I don't know about right, right now, but you find it on Amazon and you find it on my website, I talk about this in the book in several places about the fact that a relationship is, well, it's, it's grad school, to be honest. Being in a relationship is not something you just go hang out in. It's a place you choose to step into to do your deepest work with your partner. It's going to be the most transformational work in your life because you are saying yes to you. And if you are really willing to commit, and again, this is evolutionary, so you might find yourself going, whoa, I don't want to do that. If that's the case, you won't want to work with me. I just want to let you know ahead of time. <laughs> 
But if you really want the most amazing relationship you could ever have, you've got to commit to yourself first. I talked about this one yesterday. Commit to yourself first, and then commit to your partner. But you don't just commit to say, well, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm okay as I am. No. Thank you for that. You're committing to be the most real, the most authentic, the most committed to your experience with your partner. Dedicated, committed, a monogamous relationship. Because when you do that, the depth you can get to with you and your partner, because what's going to happen, and this is the opportunity, and it scares a lot of people, the opportunity is to reveal the deepest, darkest pain and suffering the other person has. So that you can create a safe container for that to be healed. Because we carry baggage. I mentioned this last week in my scope, so there's, there's a lot of scopes I'm talking about in summary here, which is why I'm talking about the evolution of relationship. I believe, and I teach this, and I'm, I'm anticipating this in my life and all the lives around me, because I spend my time around conscious growing people. We're evolving, we're moving forward, we're not, we're not part of the status quo. And if that's you, and some people are, good luck with that choice. That's not where I would stay. I've, I've been outside of that framework for a long time now, and I can't go back. It's too small a place to play. And for relationships, the same thing applies. Once you start discovering the availability of depth of love, of connection, which is true intimacy, which is beyond just sex, way beyond, which can Kurt, thank you for that, I appreciate it, Brooke. Um, then you can't go back to just a flat-lined, boring relationship. That simple. Doesn't matter how good the sex is, I've tried that, it doesn't work. <laughs> but the sex is way better when you're in somebody who's committed, not just, well, okay, I'm not gonna go there in this one. The commitment to an amazing transformational and evolutionary relationship will change your life. It's that simple. Now, how you do it, that's a whole other conversation. Um, and I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to start marking my stuff here. I just want to give you the framework so you can sit with it and see if it fits for you. Because I believe one of the components, well, 17 of the components, but let me throw a couple in now. Oh, you did. Thank you. I appreciate that. I trust you'll enjoy it. If, if, you're, you're, not, if you're in LA, I don't think you are, but if you're in LA, I'll definitely sign it for you if you have it. If not, then when we cross paths at some event or something, I'll sign it for you there. That's my promise. Um, one of the components of the evolutionary relationship is the empowerment of the male and female partners. This is some heterosexual, but it works in gay relationships too. But in heterosexual relationships, it empowers the man into his masculine authenticity. And it also empowers the woman into a feminine magnificence. Now, this is where I get into my deepest passion about this work, because this is what changed my life back in 2007, 2008. And that's why I do what I do. This is so much, an, so much of a motivation for me because I see the benefits and also the contribution of doing this. Um, part of my work that's calling me forward, and I shared this recently, is that I'm being pulled to speak in front of women's conferences because there aren't any men I know of, maybe one or two out there, I've not heard of any, who speak to women's conferences en masse to invoke and invite the divine feminine forward because I'm a firm believer that's what's going to save our planet. So. Seriously, I'm not really going to get into politics, but he doesn't match up to me as an authentic masculine man. That's all I'll say about it. I'm not going to get into politics. Because um, that's a different scope, and I don't do politics, political scopes. I'm on a rant, which occasionally borders that, but this is not where I'm going. Okay? Um, the truth with scopes, truth with scopes, truth with possibility of evolution of relationship, is that we in the true nature of masculine and feminine is way beyond the old model of codependence. Again, you can look at my archive scopes about all the different stuff I talk about this stuff. So I've covered a gamut in the last 20 scopes I've done on this. And again, catch with a K dot M-E forward slash Barry Selves where you find all the archives. Um, just rewinding again. So yes, masculine and feminine. So that's one of the most authentic pieces. Um, one of the most... Um, inspirational pieces of relationship. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing something off the side. I'm just checking what it was. It's not me, it's somebody else. <laughs> okay. Masculine feminine is the, it's the juice. It's, it's one of the most inspirational pieces of relationship work I've studied and now I teach. Partly because it's what we've been missing or ignoring or been avoiding. Secondly, because it is absolutely um, ignition for a healthy relationship, for passionate sex, communication, connection, depth, and polarity. And polarity is one of these most profound 
Um, sorry, I'm, I'm doing that. You can see the camera. Most profound um, components, and and I don't know the right word. Let's put it away. But basically, it comes to this: if you understand the masculine, feminine polarity, and I have a couple of books I recommend besides my own that will help you with this, and teachers I recommend highly too. In the fact, in the back of my book, I do recommend those people. There's a recognition of who you are in your authentic nature that changes your perspective on anybody you want to have a relationship with. It also heals a lot of patterns, which I'd say it supersedes a lot of the patterns that are out there of codependence, of um, the machismo, the bad boy stuff. That's a whole other conversation which I've done before in previous scopes. You can find it in the archives. I'm not doing it here. And also stops the women. It puts the women back in the feminine because the, the B word for women that's a miswired choice of how women are. And I'll say it this way, so please bear with me, ladies, if you're watching this, when you, if you are watching this. When women have been in the workplace, they have had to adapt and appear to be just as competitive with the men. And what happens is women haven't got the same emotional makeup and function as the men, which makes their ability to serve limited in terms of their full expression. When a woman's in a full expression, her emotional range is complete and it's open. It doesn't work in the work environment, and they've been trained not to do that. So this woman's energy gets bottled up. And I believe when it gets expressed in a negative way, you know, a man is um, bossy, but a woman is bitchy. It's not different, except the fact it's the label. Well, that's my passion. The Divine Feminine book is exactly what I'm about, because I'm so passionate about women owning the feminine power. That's what's going to, and let me say this, and I said it before again, back in the archives. But the Dalai Lama said about women, the world we save of the Western woman. What he meant, I firmly believe, and the word that's missing from that meme, is the world will be saved with the Western feminine woman. So not the Hillary Clintons, not the Margaret Thatchers, not the male version women that are trying to compete with the men in the male, male mindset, in the male way, that's not it. The feminine women. Oprah's more in the feminine than the masculine. She's one of the people I recommend. But there's other people like that out in the world, and more are needed. There's too many men, I'm one of them, but I don't do this anymore. Too many men that think they know how to do things, and it's destroying the planet, ultimately. You know, we're driving the car off the cliff and we won't put it in reverse. The feminine will. And hopefully the feminine will wake the men up to go, oh, okay, we mistake. Because we don't listen to each other. We listen to the feminine when it's in power. And that's why I'm kind of on a, that's my master plan for peace in this world. So it's a much bigger um, <laughs> conversation that's going to go on this scope. So getting back to this conversation about the relationship part, because this is what changes everything. The evolution of relationships is going to change the planet, ultimately. But I'm doing it one relationship at a time. It's going to take a slow process with 7 billion people, but I'm working on it. But you can help spread the word, so I appreciate that. But get back to this. The evolution of relationships is where men, men and women develop their true nature to express their full nature, the divine masculine, divine feminine, in polarity, in attraction, in healthy relationship. And that polarity, hi Crystal, nice to have you join me. To have that polarity is what's going to evolve your relationship beyond what you've had before. And this is my mission, passion, juiciness about this whole thing is that there's such a um, I don't know the right word. Need. <laughs> there's a simple word for it. There's a there's a requirement for this on the planet more than ever time any time before this. So the evolution of relationship, as I call it, is the evolution of how we express because we've been lazy for many years. We've been comfortable for many years, and it's time to wake the f up. All right, fine. Wake the fuck up and own our natural gifts, our power in the world. And the men in the world needs to be in their masculine. And that's going to help when the women are in their feminine because when the women are feminine, men can't survive unless they're in the masculine. And that's what's needed on the planet. So I'm talking about a bigger change than just your love life. But if you do this and other people do this, the more of us doing it, the more it's going to change the planet. So that's my bigger mission that I'm talking about, which was not meant, not meant to be part of this scope, but it's where I'm going with this. The evolution of love is owning up to your true nature. The evolution of love is owning your gifts, your talents, and your heart. The evolution of love is taking a relationship trans transcendent to where you've ever never been before. Sound fun? <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate those too, by the way. Um, I'm not going to go into much detail about how to do this because that's in my book and in my previous scopes. But if you want to work with me, I can help you with this. You can go to my website, which is barryselvey.com. And the first button in the navigation bar is Let's Chat. That's a, that's a discovery session application. 
you put information in there and you'll get a place to schedule a time to talk and we'll set up a time to chat. That will be a step I recommend if you're looking for love in the right place, not all the wrong places. And I hope you do that. Um, that's about it, I think. That, that covers my main focus I was talking about on the scope because this is what I want to tell you about. It's time to evolve our way we do relationships and love because we're doing it the same way and it ain't working anymore. Based upon the divorce rate, based upon the abuse situations in the world, based upon so many things I look at their relationships and go, this is not working. Time to evolve it, shift it to another level. And that's what I'm committed to, passionate about, and teaching about. So if you haven't watched my scopes before, you're in for some excitement. And again, look at the archives on catch.me, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E forward slash Barry Selby. That's where you find all my other scopes. My book, thank you for buying it, by the way. Um, and also my website, barryselby.com. Okay? Get out there and attract the right sort of relationship that can grow you, evolve you, and you can help do the same for your partner. Because the world needs you. And that's one way I recommend you do it. Okay? Thank you for the scope. Thank you for watching the scope, I'm trying to say. Um, I'll be right back with my Perry tips because I do these back to back. Um, two channels, by the way, so in case you didn't know this, I do a love scope, which is the one I'm just doing now. And then I come back into Perry tips. The one tonight came out of a conversation, a scope earlier because something happened. So one, I would like the way spirit works. So, so feminine can't be in a power position. Absolutely, that's not true. No. Okay, let me break this down since you asked that question. Thank you for asking. You give me inspiration to say it now. How can I describe the feminine? I don't know. I don't know if you could feel, I could feel, you could explain, that would explain right there. The feminine is not about a power position. The feminine is about, well, let me give you an analogy. It's even better to explain it. Um, well, since I'm in the marina, you saw, you saw the pictures. Let me just show you the view. This is where I'm sitting. So all these boats out there. Pretty nice, isn't it? So if you imagine the biggest, biggest ship on the ocean. There we go. If you, if you imagine the biggest ocean-going tanker, container ship, that's two miles long. That's the masculine power, the force of the emotion, of the power. It takes three miles to turn, because that's the way the masculine is. We don't turn very quickly in direction and choice and thought. The feminine is the ocean it sits on. Let's sit with that one for a second. So if you get that, the biggest ship on the ocean is the masculine power. The whole ocean that it sits on is the feminine power. So a power position, it's irrelevant. The feminine in her, in her magnificence, in her fullness, is life itself. The masculine energy is yin and yang, the dance we have. The masculine is about, to be honest, what we are focused on is, is stillness. Our strength is in our consciousness and presence. And direction to get things done, because that's the thing. We are, we, are, we are problem solvers, troubleshooters, and goal completers. That's what masculine is. We go for a goal, complete, done. The feminine is, let's embrace the journey. You know, embrace your masculine man. Thank you, Brooke. That's exactly what I teach. That's what I did wrong for the last three, well, I chose three relationships in the past that were like that, where she wasn't in a place where she let me step into masculine, and I didn't know I could. So we both lost out on that one. So what you said there was exactly right on. 